Nanyandu wabubota na muzio onibulea kuwa nari halui. Oramule na yomu tuna wabulozi. No tivani. Mane ni haba fakama yaani ya sipi. Ye kamuli swa mididi. No kubizu wa kuyikuwa ni kwa kushire. Kiko na kwa na lolo. Mule ni wa sinanga. Kwa ni kwa kutivani. Kiko na nari halui. Kashe kwa mbone. Eshe. Mandu kao fela kuzwa 1965, abolile, awile, kakuli, akuna na vasasikana, saba fumana kuiba yaise mandu. Manduna baloba la marikota, pula yaba nela, ikala pala, mari apa. Outside the royal palace in Lea Lui, the empty safes lie on the ground and remind Ngambila the Bolotsi Prime Minister of the time when old Barotsilan's finances were sound and her safes well stocked. The Royal Palace is a centre of traditional power in Bolotsi and delegations from far and wide come to seek advice from their king. King Iluta Yeta IV has been on the throne since 1977 and is the 19th in line according to royal Bulotsi lineage. Like his predecessors, King Yeta presides over all the land in the country. As his people's spiritual leader, he's greatly respected. The plains of Bulotsi reach along the Zambezi River in Zambia's western province. During the rains, the land is flooded and uninhabitable. 
When the drier season returns, people move back into the plains to the fertile earth. lands of the river lies the royal residence Lea Louis. For centuries various peoples have come across the plains, sailed along the river and settled in the area. Gradually the Lotsi became the dominant people, other tribes assimilating with them. Since the 1870s the Lotsi kings have had their permanent residence at Lea Louis. From time immemorial. Mm. There was what is called the Barozzi government. It was a fully fledged government, making laws, making bylaws, declaring war, and war declared against them, mm -hmm. to the exclusion of everybody else. And uh, as a result, they had welded a tremendous amount of political power. Lewanika was king of the Lotsi at the close of the 19th century. When his power was threatened by war with neighboring peoples, he turned to the British to seek an alliance. A protection agreement was entered into, but in return, King Lewanika was forced to relinquish all rights to Balotsi's mineral resources to the British South Africa Company under Cecil Rhodes. King Lewanika visited London and was influenced by European ideas, development and change. Missionaries were granted permission to settle in his country and spread their Christian message. They built schools, hospitals and churches. The newly opened mines needed labour. Colonialists and businessmen came across the plains. Money began to pour into the state coffers. We had our own treasury. We worked our own estimates. We put up our own buildings, we bought what equipment we needed most. We had schools, we supported missionaries who wanted to set up hospitals, we opened the roads. King Lewanika's successors to the throne went on over the years maintaining good relations with Britain. When Zambia extricated itself from British sovereignty in 1964 to become an independent nation, the president, Kenneth Kaunda, drew up an agreement with King Mwanamwina. It was agreed that Bulotsi would continue to enjoy considerable political and economic autonomy, and that's when the trouble started. It's when the Barotland Agreement 1964 signed. They said, all right, we, shall, we agree to, to becoming part and parcel of independent Zambia, provided our rights are reserved, which rights they enumerated them. You see, unfortunately, um, the Zambian government, once in power, did not 
fancy anybody else near them with almost equivalent powers, you see? So what they did was to turn around and change the laws in such a way that they abolished the agreement. Large sums from the Bulotsi treasury were transferred to the new Zambian administration. In Leilui, the safes were soon barren. The royal establishment lost much of its power and influence. Antagonism increased between the center of traditional power in Leilui and the hub of political power in the capital, Lusaka. we have today is called the Kuomboka Fundraising uh, Bri. Yes. The purpose is uh, to raise funds towards the preparations of the Kuomboka ceremony. <laughs> Zambezi River, Zambezi Plain, gets flooded, so it becomes inhabitable, so people have to move to the drier land. So the Royal Highness, together with the people living in the plains, move to the drier land. This is a ceremony called the Congo. <laughs> In most lodges, I will tell you, they have two homes. One here, one in Perosland. You know, this is how we live. Most of our parents live there, most of our relatives live there. We really, it's a unitary state. We are part of Zambia, but you still find that most people prefer to live there because of the culture and the environment. Since time immemorial, people have had to make the annual journey across the Bulotsi Plains. Today, the journey constitutes a link between the new society and the traditional one. Each year, when it's time to move away from the rising waters, Kuumboka, Lotsi from the whole of Zambia, travel home for the festivities. In Lea Louis, work has been going on for a couple of months now, building King Yeta's new barge, the Nalik Wanda. To make Korombaka colorful, we need more than seven badges. At present, all our, our, our badges, uh, they are all, they are, they are all destroyed and uh, we need a new set. It is interesting to find that the inflation in our country is running at a very, very, very fast rate. When we built that one, it was only 28,000, but the one we are building now, of the same size, cost us more than 14 million, 14 million. The bard sings of the approaching rains and the journey, which will soon be undertaken by the king and his people of the plains. Uh, I try to do my weather observation over there. 
one day when we had 58.6 millimeters of rain, it was a frightening downpour. I can tell you, Professor, the water is now becoming threatening. <laughs> now. It has to threaten to a certain level to really give us a fright. Without a fright, we just say, oh, friendly Kwambok, friendly Munda, you know, friendly water. So what I'm trying to say is that Kwamboka uh, really is not a ceremony, a very pure ceremony as such. It is just an effort to get out of the flooding plain. Kuomboka has now become an important issue, even for the authorities in Lusaka. For Zambia, it has become a tourist attraction. It's one of the selling points uh, for Zambian tourism. And we always look forward to receiving visitors to come and participate in this ceremony. In Lea Louis, it's been decided that it's high time the king took refuge from the rising waters. And the royal master of ceremonies goes to the king with the drumsticks so that he can inform his people that this year's Kuumboka is imminent. drums sound across the land, declaring that the great migration is only a day or two away. It's to the firmer ground at Limulunga that the king and his court will be moving. The royal winter palace has stood empty for several months. A lot has to be put in order before the king's return. Guests begin to arrive at Lealui. Wherever they may be, Kuumboka is of great importance to the Lotsi. Anyway, uh, Kuumboka has uh, sort of become a ceremony. And a lot of people like to associate themselves with Kuumboka. In fact, I would dare to say, any Mulozi who has never peddled in the Narikwanda, doesn't matter whether he's a lawyer or a doctor, is looked upon, you know, is looked down upon. He must, at one time or another, spend a little bit of time peddling the night. In Lea Louis, the day before Kuumboka is the most hectic day of the year. The new Nalekwanda and the other royal barges have to be made shipshape. About 200 paddles have to be tested and decorated. There must be food and drink for each crew member, 
and each of the awaited celebration guests. Not until late in the evening is the new Nalekwanda ready for the following day's journey. In the cold morning air, the drums have to be tuned before being rolled on board. Then, Kuomboka can begin. Madame Vera Shiluba, wife of the president of Zambia and guest of honor for the occasion, arrives with her entourage. You look like my son. <laughs> okay, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone meet the way I look. <laughs> 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 So happy that I'm um, among them as the first lady and with our minister. These are all ministers, so we are all happy to be here. <laughs> Prime Minister Mututwa greets the guests from the capital in the parliament building of Bulotsi. As the barge crew waits to begin their royal transportation. Mandua Manduna, Alfela Ababale. 
Fere, la funduka, pusiari se zicea bacau, fere ca cozi, n-amina o acunona, cu lumele sinte, pusiari se zicea bacau, fere ca cozi. King Iluti Yeta and his male guest of honour, the Zambian Minister of Defence, are ferried together in the royal vessel, while Madame Shiluba travels in the Nutila, the Queen's boat. We have a tradition to maintain, and this tradition has its own social values, which, in my humble opinion, would be very, very unfortunate to dispose of them, because they form a very strong public opinion at the grassroots level, where the government does not reach, where political parties do not reach. Tradition is there, and we are there with the people. By sending high-ranking officials to the Kulumboka, the central government underlines that the ceremony has, over the years, become politically more important. How does the king see his own political role? I'm not interested in competing for political problems. After all, I've had my chance. I'm no longer a young man. But during my day, I held every post in the government. And I worked through the, the ranks. So I, I, I've done my part. And quite honestly, at my age, I don't like to have to go through those again. <laughs> When the royal drums sound across the land, they carry a message of respect for all traditions. But the Kuomboka has come more and more to serve as a link with the outside world. It is something we have, we have come to value very much because it brings us together, it brings us in contact with the outside world, it um, makes it possible for officials, high officials in government to come along here and to enable us to intimately tell them about problems that we face. I would like to have a better canal. I would like to have a road to Calabria. I would like to see uh, airplanes landing in the moon for better transport. I would like to see better buses. I would like to see a malnutrition er eradicated, malaria reduced.
The journey is over 15 kilometers and necessitates a whole day's travel. The music reflects the rhythm of the journey and its various stages. On dry land at the harbor in Limulunga, a couple of thousand people are already waiting for the king and his entourage to arrive. The great number of people greeting King Ilutieto raises the question, does it worry the king's guests from the capital that his popularity is so great? No, not what I'll say, nothing right. <laughs> that fear does exist all the time. I've always said it was a groundless fear. No, nobody believes it. I think it is things like the receptions you saw last night, which makes them shake to the very, very core of their bones. But they fear that we may take it away. And I'm saying, no, we are giving it to you. Not to say, no, you, you want to take it away. We are saying, no, we want to give you everything. It's an argument I think that will go on for ages. reception in Limulunga goes on for two days. He might seem to be isolated from his people, sat on his throne and bound by tradition. How does he see his own role? Does he know what's going on at grassroots level? We are the people at the ground, at the grassroots level, you see. So talk to us. We'll tell you what we need most. For instance, I'll tell you that um, if, for instance, we could really have a good control of mosquitoes and eradicate malaria that way, we have done us more service that way than even building a few more schools. Because what are the use of the schools for children who will never reach school age because they should have died of malaria? Anyway, this is our argument. This is our way of looking at it. But somebody sitting in Lusaka says, no, I'll, I'll tell you what you need. You need a school. You need an additional school. And we are saying, yes, we do. But we would, unless this is done properly, unless malaria is treated and juvenile delinquency is, is controlled, poaching is controlled, who will go to those schools? It, it, really, it, it, to me, 
to me, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a development, this participation of all of us. When the river subsides, the king and his court return to Leirui. The Bulotsi Prime Minister, Mututwa, and his government, back once again in their humble parliament building, discuss the country's economic problems. The empty safes are still the open wounds they were, reminding all of the unsolved conflict between traditional rule in Leilui and the central political power in the capital, Lusaka. <laughs> Ma cosa? Cosa? Cosa fela?